Today I fucked up and made a man uncomfortable for a three hour public ride. This is a special kind of fuck up where it's not your fault but you still should have known better especially having experience with people. I was carpooling with a group. And what makes this story even worse is that I and a friend who have caretaking experience were asked to be there to help people who needed support, whether emotional or first aid or geriatrics or disability related. As time went, we were going to pick more people up for this event. This drive would be three hours before the hotel, then a few more. Fast forward to a certain stop. A person got on. I went to make sure he has everything, and started some small talk since he seemed kind of nervous. Not knowing how to start the conversation, I said my name and then I told him I was there for first aid and what not. Then, he informed me that he was car sick. I personally don't get car sickness but I've known some people who do. I apologized and said I didn't have much to help and he seemed to be really shy, so I backed off not knowing what to say. The least I could do was sit there with him. That's probably where his confusion came from, but, at the time, I took it as general discomfort. Over the course of the ride, this man was probably just trying to have some peace and quiet, sit back and play a game on this phone, enjoyed the day off, what have you, but over an entire hour consisted of him being bombarded with mints I found in my bag, story or YouTube recommendations, this overbearing lady telling him to make sure he gets plenty of rest when we got to the hotel and offering to buy him food and telling him what to eat, you name it. I even had the driver stop before the lunch break so I could offer to buy something different than what was in my bag. As time went on, of course, it caught attention of everybody on the ride, so everybody was asking if he was okay, looking over at him, offering him various things. All this crap, because this man's name is Karthik. He was Karthik. Turns out he doesn't have a lisp. A person at the front of the bus asked what was going on with Karthik. Not sick or shy, but confused as fuck and publicly exploited, that's what. TL, doctor, a man told me his name so I spent the entire time bothering him and putting everybody's attention on him, until I learned that he does not have a lisp like it sounded and he is in fact not Karthik, but named Karthik. I could not figure out where this story was going and now I'm laughing so hard. I'm Karthik. Sorry, I don't have anything that can help with that. This is great. You dad joked him for the entire ride. To be fair. It'd be worse if he said he was Karthik and you confidently told him you could cure at. I'm laughing out loud. Wish I would have said that just to know how it'd go. Oh my gods. I am feeling embarrassed for the both of you. You were being a good human and trying to help. Poor Karthik. Today I fucked up by trying to cook my boyfriend breakfast. Sorry I'm dyslexic for any spelling and grammar errors. Today was my boyfriend's birthday, and on his birthday his mother used to make a big breakfast. Bacon, eggs, pancakes and more. But after he came out, him and his mum do not speak. Well I decided that I will try and be romantic and make him breakfast nothing big or fancy like his mum cause I can't really cook, however after talking to everyone I know they all kept telling me scrambled eggs on toast is one of the easiest thing to make. Even with my little to no cooking skills, well that's a lie. I burnt the toast, the eggs and, the kitchen curtains. Side note. Smoke detectors work so does a fire extinguisher. I also had to go to the emergency room at the same hospital that my boyfriend who is a nurse works. My boyfriend now believes me when I say I can't cook. Too long didn't read, tried cooking breakfast for my boyfriend. I ended up burning everything even the kitchen curtains and, a trip to the emergency room. Please tell me how. First I burnt the toast which set off the smoke detectors. When I was trying to get the smoke detectors to stop working, the eggs somehow caught on fire I don't know how but they did so I ran over and grabbed the skillet, how I burnt myself, and thought it in the sink and that is how the curtains caught on fire. Lamau. Well hey, good effort buddy. Maybe next time order some breakfast in, smiley face, smiley face. Don't feel bad my mom gave my dad food poisoning while they were dating and they have been married now 42 years. The joke in our house was my mom's best meal was when we went out to eat. My grandmother was a good cook by the time I was born, but apparently she didn't learn until after getting married. And was taught by my grandfather's sister. 
Maybe next year you should try a parfait bar, yogurt, granola, fresh fruit, other toppings, no heat involved. Smile. That's a great idea. If my boyfriend lets me back in his kitchen again I'll give it a try lol. Well, at least now he believes you can't cook. That's A plus. Lol. And seriously though, the thought counts. And making him feel at home by doing this was about a day I fucked up a thought. Nice try, up smile. Today I fucked up by having drugs in my purse. So let's go back to about a year ago. It's going to be my first Mother's Day without a mother. The eve of, I drive over to my best friend's house to get drunk. I just wanted to surround myself with good people to prepare for slash try to not think about tomorrow. We have a good time and I wake up the next morning a little groggy. I'm sitting on the couch watching the morning news with my best friend's mom and little brother when I get a text from my dad. It's a picture of my purse open on the floor of my room with an empty snack bag next to it. I immediately jump up and call my dad. Turns out my dog had been scratching at my door so my dad let him into my room and he had spitefully gone into my purse and chewed up my shit, hence the empty snack bag. The only thing problem was that snack bag contained an one eighth of psychedelic mushrooms and my elderly 14 pounds chihuahua had eaten all of them. I rush home to find my dad kneeling on the floor next to my dog who has his face buried in the blanket. I gently put my hand on his back and say his name. He pulls his head up and oh my god his eyes are fucking saucers bugging out of his head. Everything had to have been moving like crazy because immediately he puts his head back down and buries his face again. We rush him to the vet and in the car he makes the most ungodly noises I have ever heard and basically has a meltdown. At the vet he's fine, he just chills in my arms looking like he's disassociated to another dimension. Since it's covid i can't go in but the vet calls me and is basically like yeah sorry we don't know what to tell you none of us have ever seen psilocybin poisoning before we called three other vets in the area and they also have no idea what to do i do remember the vet saying and this is a direct quote that it looked like he my dog was having a bad trip fair enough i also never thought i'd see a dog tripping on shrooms they did however recommend calling animal poison control we take him home again he freaks out in the car but other than that seems to be settling into the trip i call animal poison control and they are also at a loss as far as what to do but they recommend taking him back to the vet for 24 hours monitoring as a precaution. Given how stressful the first vet trip was, and how much more relaxed he was at home, I figured it'd be better to just let him ride it out in a space he felt safe rather than a cold metal table surrounded by strangers. For those of you who don't know, the way the psychoactive compound works with your brain makes it physically impossible to sleep. So my man was in it for the long haul. I don't know what the experience was like for him obviously, but from the outside looking in it seemed very similar to a person's. We sat on the couch for about 3 hours during which he stared into space limp on my lap thinking about his only knows what. Probably reevaluating his life and hopefully working through past trauma. When I got up he tried to follow me, forgot how his legs worked lost control of his bladder and peed on the couch. After cleaning up I was able to get him to get up and go outside. It took him probably 20 minutes to go down a 20 feet hallway because he would excitedly rush forward a few steps then proceed to stand unmoving for several minutes. I would be lying if I said he wasn't enjoying himself by this point. By the end of the day it had worn off and he was back to normal. And this could have just been me seeing what I want to, but he seemed happier and more energetic in the days following. A year later and he's totally fine. In the end I was lucky and ended up with a hilarious story and not a tragic one. But I defiantly learned my lesson and now all substances are far out of his reach. Too long didn't read, my chihuahua are an one eighth of magic mushrooms and tripped for 12 hours. Well, if any breed ever needed an ego death, it's a chihuahua. Sorry for the loss of your mama, I too have spent a couple without my mom. That would probably put me out of commission for the whole day lmao. Side note, if you smoke weed and go camping, bag your waist so dogs can't eat it and get THC poisoning. My dog is a dirty bastard. All's well that ends well. Glad the dog is okay. He has a hell of a story to share with the bitches next time he's at the dog park.
Damn, I'm a 150 pounds human and an eighth of shrooms has the potential to put me completely out of my head. That dog is like my hero or something. The first time I did shrooms I did a quarter ounce. I knew that I wanted to try them and I had listened to quite a few trip stories so I had an idea what I was getting in for. What I didn't know was how much a quarter ounce was in reference to how high you get. We then proceeded to watch the yellow submarine by the Beatles and it freaked me the hell out. The big blue meanies are freaking scary. Once the movie was over I was doing much better. Saw my shadow on the ground and all of a sudden it looked like I was looking at myself from the third person. And I was John Lennon. Best trip I've ever had.